Chapter 14, Regression. Item 25 is a continuation of problem 9 that we began in a previous video. So we've already calculated the correlation between the variables of women's weight and income. We used a sample size of 10 individuals, 10 women, and categorized their weight. We calculated the mean of the weight categories equal to 3 with the sum of square deviations equal to 20. And for income, measured in thousands, the average was equal to 66,000, with the sum of square deviations equal to 7,430. And that helped us calculate our sum of products of mean deviations equal to negative 359. So in um, this problem, we're asked to find the regression equation for predicting income from weight. And that requires that we solve for slope. And so our slope, so first let's write our equation. So a y hat is equal to slope times x plus our intercept. So we'll need to solve for our slope. Slope is equal to sp, the sum of products of deviations, over the sum of squared mean deviations for our x distribution. So we have these values. sp is equal to negative 359 over SSX, which was given um, equal to 20. So these are the two values that we're working with. So our slope is equal, in our calculators, negative 359 divided by 20. We get a slope equal to negative 17.95. Now we can solve for the y-intercept. Our equation is the mean of y minus our slope multiplied by the mean of x. And so our mean of y is equal to 66, again it is thousands, um, reported in thousands of dollars, minus our slope, negative 17.95, multiplied by the mean of x. The mean of x is equal to 3, so we use that and this, um, and our slope, and this is equal to, excuse me, multiply by the mean of x, which is 3. So in our calculators, multiply negative 17.95 by 3. It will be a negative now value. Again, recognize that there is a negative outside of the parentheses, so be conscientious of that. And we should get a value of y-intercept equal to 119.85. So that means our um, intercept, excuse me, our E regression equation is equal to the slope, 17.95, that we just calculated, multiplied by a given value of x, plus our y-intercept of 119.85. What I'm going to do with that equation is now make predictions. Given x um, in the original data set, I'll predict y. So what we have here is the original data of our um, weight categories and our income. And then this column here, y hat, is calculated using the equation that we just um, came up with, which was, was negative 17.95 multiplied by x added to our y-intercept of 19.85. So for the first x, if x is equal to 1, so x is equal to 1, y hat is equal to negative 17.95 times 1 plus 119.85. And that's how, you know, so in our calculators, go ahead and calculate that. And you should get 101.9, and that's where this value came from. So this column here represents all of our predicted values given x. So if x is equal to 2, y hat would equal 83.95. Again, these were all arrived at by using our regression equation that we just calculated. So again, we can make predictions for all of these values, um, all of these x values on the left. Given these values, we can predict what their income, the uh, woman's income would be. Now, because r is not equal to 1, negative 1 in this case, because the slope is negative, 
we don't know exactly what y will equal, but um, we have a pretty good idea because the relationship is quite strong. But there is a difference, um, right? We refer to as the error or the residual as representing y minus y hat. So I've done those calculations for you as well. So again, this column here, y hat represents the predicted value using our regression equation, our predicted value given x. In this next column, it's the residual and it's calculated by taking the actual y value, in the first case 125,000, minus the predicted value of 101.9, and we get a difference of 23.1. Again, the regression line is the best fitting line. It's the line that minimizes the um, squared residual. So we first have to calculate the residual, the difference between the actual and the prediction. And that's what I've done in this column. I've labeled as residual y minus y hat, the actual minus the predicted. And then finally, um, I've calculated the residual squared. So I've taken the actual minus the prediction and squared all of those values. So this 533.61 is simply taking 23.1 and, and squaring it. So you'll want to go back um, and take a moment to check all of these to make sure that you understand how each of these calculations is being calculated. At the very end here, this value represents SS residual. SS residual is the unpredicted variability in Y. Again, SS residual is the unpredicted variability in Y. The change in Y, therefore, is, is explained by other factors. So one of our equations for SS SS residual is equal to the sum of our residuals squared. So again, it's some, similar to sum of squared deviations. We calculate the deviation, we square it, and then take the summation. But in this case, we are calculating our residual, the error between the actual and the prediction. We're squaring the residuals and then taking the summation. So in this case, SS residual is equal to 985.95. Now there's another equation we were given to calculate SS residual, which I'll go over in just a minute. But um, the purpose of calculating this now is recognizing that R, in this case, is equal to negative 0.931. A very strong correlation, but it, it is not equal to negative 1. So therefore, we understand that our predictions are somewhat off. And so we're going to use our SS residual to calculate the estimated or standard estimated um, difference, the average difference between our actual value and the predicted value. And we can add that to our regression equation for accuracy because, again, our regression equation is not perfect because R is not equal to negative 1. The other equation for SS residual. I'll go ahead and present that now, is equal to 1 minus the coefficient of determination, which is r squared, multiplied by ssy, the sum of squared deviations for our y distribution. And those values we've already calculated um, is equal to, so if we take 1 minus 0.8673, Zero, one, four. If we wait to round to the very end, we'll be more accurate in our calculations. But again, this value here came from uh, strictly from taking our R value, which was 0 0.931 negative, and squaring it. And then we're going to multiply it by SSY, which we had calculated previously. So SS residual, given this equation, so 1 minus the, correlation, uh, the coefficient of determination, multiplied by the sum of squared deviations of our y distribution, we should get 985.9506. If we round, and again, it should be identical to what we saw here, right, the sum. So if we just take the sum of the residual squared, we get 985.95. If we use the alternate equation of SS residual, we get the same value. 985.95. Again, the slight difference 
um, is just due to the rounding of um, our coefficient of determination. So we've calculated our SS residual, and that's going to enable us to calculate the standard error of the estimate. So we know since r is not equal to negative 1, there's some difference in our prediction. So regression equation is incomplete unless we include that value. So our standard error of the estimate is equal to our SS residual. Again, that's the unpredicted variability over degrees of freedom. And in this case, we just calculated our SS residual, and it was equal to 985.95059. Again, you can use either version, either the expanded version or the rounded version, given the sum of squared residuals. N minus 2 represents our degrees of freedom. So that would be equal to 8. So go ahead and do this calculation, 985.95059 divided by 8 and take the square root. And we should get 11.102. And what that's saying is a regression equation, right, the predicted value of y can be cal calculated using the slope that we calculated multiplied by the given x value added to the white intercept and then plus or minus this standard error of the estimate. Again, it's the average difference we would anticipate between y and y hat, the actual and the predicted value. So this value needs to be included in our regression equation, otherwise the assumption is that r is equal to 1, positive or negative, and that we don't have standard error of the estimate. Um, so Again, this standard error of the estimate is a function of how strong the, the variables are correlated with one another. The stronger the relationship, the smaller the standard error of the estimate. So again, it's representative of the average difference between the prediction and the actual value of y. B states, what percentage of the variance in income is accounted for the regression equation? Um, so we're asked to calculate the coefficient of determination, the percentage of variance in income attributed to its relationship with the weight category variable. So again, we calculated R in a previous video. R was equal to the sum of products of deviations over the square root of the product of SSX multiplied by SSY. So let's just redo that. Again, it's negative 359 over the square root of 20 multiplied by 7,430, 7, and that was equal to negative 0.931. So r squared, the coefficient of determination, is simply taking negative 0.931 and squaring it, and that's where we get the 0.8673. We can uh, round that and, and simply report um, the coefficient determination of 0.867, which we're saying that 86.7% of the variance in income is attributed to the relationship with income, excuse me, weight. So again, we want to be able to explain the, the changes that we're seeing and why from one observation to the, ne to the next, again, from one person to the next. So it's a very large um, pr proportion of the variance being explained by its relationship with the other variable, with the x variable. So 86.7% of the variance in income is attributed to the relationship with weight. And so again, we're seeing this negative correlation between the two. And finally, C asks, does the regression equation account for a significant portion of the variance in income? In other words, we're trying to assess the significance of the regression equation that was calculated using a correlation coefficient. 
So we're going to use alpha equal to 0 0.05 to evaluate the F ratio. So let's just begin by stating what the research and null hypothesis would be when we're assessing the significance of the regression equation. So the null is going to state that the slope of the regression equation is equal to zero. Again, if there's no relationship between the two variables, um, our, the correlation coefficient would be equal to zero and the slope of the regression line would be equal to zero, meaning that every time you change the value of x, your best prediction of the y variable would be um, a constant, the mean of that distribution, so the slope would be um, equal to zero. And the alternative hypothesis states that the slope of the regression equation is not equal to zero. Okay, and so to evaluate the significance of our F statistic, we need to calculate our F ratio. And our F ratio is equal to MS regression. MS regression represents the variance in Y scores that is predicted by the regression equation. So again, MS regression rep is representative of the variance in Y scores that is predicted by the regression equation. And then MS residual, again residual meaning the, the difference between the actual and the prediction or the error value is uh, representative of the unpredicted variance in y-scores. So we know that each MS statistic is calculated by its SS regression over degrees of freedom regression, and similarly our MS residual it would be a function of SS residual over its DF residual. So we'll do that um, in just a second, but again, as I just mentioned, MS regression is represented of the variance in Y scores, so the change in Y that is is predicted by the regression equation. Again, all a function of its original relationship, how strong R is to begin with. And then over the unpredicted variance in the Y scores. So again, this idea that um, and variance is attributed to other factors, things that don't have to do with the relationship with the x variable. We'll need our critical f to de determine the significance of our f ratio, and that's contingent on the degrees of freedom for the regression, degrees of freedom regression, and degrees of freedom residual. Degrees of uh, freedom regression is always equal to 1, and degrees of freedom residual is equal to n minus 2. So that would be 10 minus 2 is equal to 8. So we're going to use degrees of freedom of 1, comma 8 to find our critical f value. Okay, so in our f table, the degrees of freedom of the numerator would be representative of the degrees of freedom regression, which was equal to 1. And then the degrees of freedom for the denominator was representative of the degrees of freedom residual, which was equal to 8. And again, the light face type is um, for 0 0.05, and bold um, would be for 0 0.01. So we find our critical F is equal to 5.32. So we've just identified that our critical F value is 5.32 given the um, alpha level set at 0 0.05. So now we can go ahead and calculate our MS 
regression, which is equal to our SS regression. over df regression so again ms regression is representative of the variance in the y scores that is predicted by the regression equation related to the correlation between the two variables ss regression is referred to as the predicted variability is calculated by taking our correlation coefficient multiplied by the variability of y, the sum of squared deviations of y. So again, this is representing the predicted variability. So we're going to use our r squared, which was equal to 0.8673014, which we calculated earlier, multiplied by SSY, 7430. And we get um, SS regression equal to 6,444.0494. And our DF regression, as we've already identified, is equal to 1. So now we can calculate MS regression. It's equal to 6,444.0494. We see that that's equal to 6,444.0494. Now we can calculate MS residual. MS residual is the unpredicted variance in Y scores. And that's equal to SS residual, representative of the unpredicted variability, over DF residual. And we saw that we could calculate SS residual two different ways. And we've already done those calculations. Um, one was simply by taking the sum of our residuals, the difference between the actual and the predicted, and squaring it. And in that case, we had um, calculated um, from our table, which I'll show you in just a minute, 985. 0.95, and I'll show you again um, just to review where that value came from. So again, this is the value I just uh, notated, and that's the sum of all residual values that have been squared. So that's one method by which calculating SS residual. The other method by that we can use to calculate SS residual, again, the unpredicted variability, our equation is 1 minus our coefficient determination, r squared, multiplied by SSY. And in this case, we would take 1 minus 0.8673014. Again, so if we don't round to the, if we wait to round at the very end, we, we just have a more precise, accurate answer. SSY is 7,430. So go ahead in your calculators, take 1 and subtract 0 0.8673014 and multiply that by 7,430. We should get residual, and we've already done this once before, uh, 985.95. 059. It's a more accurate answer because we're using this and um, instead of just the summation of the squared residuals. But essentially they're, they're equivalent to one another and we can use either equation to calculate our SS residual. Our DF residual is equal to N minus 2. So that's 10 minus 2 and we get 8. So now we can calculate MS residual equal to 985.9506. Again, if we round four digits right the decimal um, before the very end, it's going to produce the most accurate answer. Divided by eight, and we get MS residual equal to 123.24. And again, um, this is representative of the 
unpredicted um, variability. And the MS regression, again, given the regression is based on the relationship, this is the variability attributed to the relationship. So we're going to use these two values to calculate our F ratio. So finally, again, our F ratio is equal to MS regression over MS residual. And we just calculate those values, 6,444.0494 over 123.2438. And if we do that calculation, that's equal to an F statistic of 52.287 very large F ratio. So let's uh, refresh what our, our critical F, F was equal to at, um, 0 0.05, alpha 0 0.05 with degrees of freedom of 2 and, excuse me, 1 comma 8. We had a critical um, F value equal to 5.32. So visually, if we draw our F distribution, we have a critical F of 5. 0.32, and this representing our critical region, and we would uh, recognize that this value is essentially way, way over here somewhere. Again, this is all in the critical region. It's a very high F statistic. And what we've just concluded originally, our test was that the slope of the regression line is equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, then our regression equation is not effective or significant in making predictions of y given x. And now we've concluded that the regression equation is significant in, um, in, in making predictions of y given x, and, and that is because our slope is not equal to zero. So our conclusion again would be to reject the null, and that means that we have um, the regression equation does account for a significant portion of the variance for income scores. And again, um, that, that can be easily translated into that, that the slope is not equal to zero. The regression equation does account for a significant portion of the variance in income scores. Again, all grounded in the rela initial relationship that we had tested. Um, we conducted an F ratio test with degrees of freedom of 1 comma 8. Our F was equal to 52.287. The probability of obtaining that is less than a 5% chance. Um, if we had utilized alpha 0 0.01, we would still reject. Um, if we look in our table, I believe the F um, Critical F at 0 0.01 is 11.26, so even then we would um, reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the regression equation does account for a significant portion of the variance for income scores, and again, based on the relationship between those two variables.